Well, good morning, all. It's uh, December 1st. It's the first Sunday of Advent. It's the first Sunday of a brand new church year. And uh, we're going to start with an awful lot of announcements. And then we'll invite the Charpentier family to come forward to uh, light the first candle of our Advent wreath. So let me start, um, since I just talked about this being the first day of Advent and the first day of our beginning to prepare for Christmas, this is the end of our Christmas uh, preparations, Christmas night. So on Christmas night, we are going to be singing Nine Lessons in Carols. I don't know if you've ever heard that before, seen it on television, listened to it on public radio. Um, it's a beautiful service. And what it says is Nine Lessons in Carols. There's nine readings that anticipate the birth of Jesus and then celebrate the birth of Jesus, followed with beautiful music. And so we are looking for people uh, to volunteer for readers on Christmas Eve, 7 p.m. I have the nine readings here. So if you would like to volunteer to be a reader on Christmas Eve, uh, please see me after the service and um, I'll give you one of the readings or you can choose whichever one you would like. The Christmas craft fair is gonna be this coming Saturday. We have snow coming this afternoon into tomorrow. Uh, I get all excited about snow, but I know the ones who are preparing for the Christmas craft fair are none too happy. Uh, so we are getting ready this week. Do you want to say anything about that, Linda? hand them and there'll be runners to put them in the dining room. If you can't, that's fine. And the same on that side, if you could just line up and we'll go hand over hand till we empty the balcony and just put it in the dining room anywhere on the floor in there or in Marty's room, we'll figure it out after. We need people for these dates, so see me. If it's snowing tomorrow, of course they'll come. If it Blows over, I'll see every single one of you. No, I'll see you. Okay. If you can help, tomorrow we take the tables, line the tablecloths up, you know, and tape them all, and get stuff ready like that. And so every day there's something to do, but I can explain that when you come out and see me. So again, after church, if we could just line up and we'll go hand over hand with the boxes and put them out there. Okay, Linda, thanks much. Um, because of the snow as well, my friend, uh, Reverend Dr. Cynthia Cross and Harrington, uh, the author of that book about her son's uh, battle with post-traumatic stress disorder and eventual suicide, uh, the book is called You Cannot Cage the Wolf, A Mother Struggles with Suicide of Her Soldier Son. That was supposed to be at 1.30 this afternoon, her reading and signing of the book at the Waitley Congregational Church. Um, and she decided that probably with the snow would be best to postpone it. So she is postponing it to Saturday, the day of our craft fair at 1.30 p.m. I told her I won't be there because of the craft fair. I'm going to order a book and have her sign it for me. If anybody would like to, uh, if maybe you can't be there, if you would like a book to have her um, sign it for you, please let me know and I'll pass that request on to her, uh, which will now be next Saturday. Also, uh, this afternoon was supposed to be our youth group meeting. We are hosting for the association. That, because of the snow, was also postponed and that will be taking place on the 15th. So, no youth group meeting today. I want to say thank you to uh, Sue McGlue. Uh, the Advent wreath again is and Ed, too, and Ed, I'm sorry, Ed and Sue McGlue uh, for the Advent wreath. It looks beautiful, and that will be with us throughout this season. Also, June Lampern is right there. Her husband's not doing so well, can't be with us today. Uh, but today is Bernie's 84th birthday. So uh, we do hope that you'll pass on our best wishes on his 84th birthday to Bernie. Um, let's see, we got a bunch of other stuff. The cover donations. We have this one here for the first Sunday of Advent, the Candle of Hope. And this one is being donated by Amy Novak, and it is in honor of John and Amy's parents. We have three other covers over there. If anybody would like to sign up for any of these covers to donate them in honor of someone, in memory of anyone, uh, please let us know and we can take care of that as well. Uh, let's see, that, that, that. Um, we want to say a very special welcome. In the very back, we have Bella Casper, um, our newest member. Bella is here. So, we congratulate the Casper family on the newest member, and uh, Bella looks just adorable. So congratulations on Bella. 
If you haven't yet seen the newsletter, it is out. It's on, uh, on our website. It's also printed. We have copies back there. Um, it has not yet been mailed out to you. Um, I was hoping it would be, but it hasn't been yet. Uh, but if you haven't got a, news, uh, a copy yet, it's on our website and also paper copies are back there. So now, the uh, chat and coffee is offered by Linda, Mary, Cynthia, and Marty, and we appreciate that. You still have the big Y and the Stop and Shop gift card, so see Linda about that. Our food collection for November is completed, the Horn of Plenty. Amy dropped off 300 and a little bit more pounds of food for the Survival Center. So for 300 pounds of food uh, to help people who are really in desperate need, thank you to everyone who donated uh, to that food collection. After service, uh, we will set up for the craft fair. Also, Bible study tomorrow is 7 to 8 with a question mark. I have no idea. You know, I don't trust all these weather forecasts. They get all excited. You know, they're talking a foot of snow and you get two inches or something like that. So I have no idea what's going to come tomorrow. So if you are thinking about going to Bible, I have it on the schedule for 7 o'clock tomorrow. Um, please check Facebook. It'll be posted on Facebook whether or not we are going to go for, uh, forward with that or not. But as of now, I'm going to plan for it. If the weather really is as the weathermen are saying, I will postpone that. But uh, check Facebook if you are thinking about going to Bible study tomorrow. The craft fair is on Saturday, 8.30 to 2. Next Sunday is Gordon Pullen's Ecclesiastical Council in North Hadley. They ask each association church, which we are one in North Hadley, the Hampshire Association, to send the pastor and four representatives from the church. If you would like to go represent our church at Gordon Pullen's Ecclesiastical Council next uh, Sunday, um, I think it's at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, uh, please uh, see me and we can arrange for that as well. Any other announcements from the... Wow! <laughs> All right, Carol. Most of the gifts back, but if you haven't returned your gift for children yet, I have to have it back next Sunday. Just don't bring it to me Saturday at the craft fair. And after church, if somebody could, you know, a couple people could help me carry some of these things out to my car, I would really appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Yep, Linda. Um, and we are selling. We do have some beautiful pieces of wood furniture out there. She's redone. And a few things on the table that are for sale. So the more you buy today, the less we have to set up during the week. <laughs> All right, Linda, perfect. Yeah, a yeah Anita? Uh, I just wanted to remind all the families that we will be having our annual Christmas pageant during the church service on December 22nd. And if you are interested in participating, I'm going to have a sign-up sheet. So we'll have all the different roles available, and um, if you're available to do that, uh, just put that on your calendar, and we'd love to see you there. Thanks, Anita. Marty? Yes, Carolyn from Austin wanted me to ask anybody if um, they would still like to donate to the raffle tree, or if you have raffle cards that go on there, if you could give them to me today, and I'll pass them on. Okay. And then, yep, June? Okay, for the poinsettias. Anything else? Uh, oh, yeah, Linda again. Did I say about the sign-up sheet? Did I say about the sign-up sheet? Yep. Okay. <laughs> All right, I don't see any of the hands. The prelude for this morning's worship is the Wexford Carol.
Thanks, Anthony. And if I could have the sharp and tears come up. Are we giving the lighter to the youngest one? Yes. Yeah? <laughs> we'll figure out how to <laughs> All right, so you guys, how do you want to do the reading? Just going to... The girls are going to do... Perfect. Reading. Okay. So the, the first candle of the Advent wreath is the, the candle of hope. From Isaiah, for darkness shall cover the earth and thick darkness the peoples, but the Lord will arise upon you and his glory will appear over you. We light this candle to proclaim the coming of the light of God into this world. With the coming of this light, there is hope. Because of Christ, we not only have hope, but we believe that good is stronger than evil. God wants us to work for good in this world. Light one candle. Okay, now. Who is going to be in charge of your, okay, come on over, come on over. We're going to light just this one right there. Okay, you know what, we're going to have to, in, there, you have to hold, okay, let's do this together so we can hold that in. There we go. Great job. Oh God, we thank you that Jesus brought hope into our world. By the good news of the Bible, you are still bringing hope to all people. Help us to be ready to welcome Jesus Christ so we may think good thoughts and do good deeds and so that we may be a people of hope in and for our world. Amen. Thank you, guys. That was beautiful. Thanks very much. <laughs> hey, that's it. <laughs> oh, play with the candles? That's always good. Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. So we gather today on the first Sunday of Advent. These four Sundays represent the putative 4,000 years that the world waited for the coming of the Messiah. And so this is a time of joyful anticipation. I know there's all kinds of stuff going out there. Christmas is already in the air, but in church we kind of take it just a little bit slower, a little bit more spiritual, a little bit deeper than just Frost the Snowman and Rudolph and we kind of really try to wonder what it means that God comes into our world in the poverty and the humbleness of the Bethlehem manger. And that message all begins with hope. So in that same spirit, yesterday Sharon and I, we went to see, now what's the real name of the Mr. Rogers movie? Welcome to our neighborhood or something like that? Beautiful day in the neighborhood. 
If you get a chance, go. What a wonderful, wonderful experience that was. What a wonderful man he was. Uh, it was really inspiring. Tom Hanks did a beautiful job with it. And you know, you, you left there and I, we met a couple of friends uh, as we were leaving. And there's this one big dude, you know, really tough looking. You, his eyes are all puffy, you know, he'd been crying. It really is a tearjerker, and in a good way, because this man, he just lived everything that we're gonna be talking about during Advent. And no matter what the world threw at him, he always gave that Christian message back of peace and hope and friendship and love. And it's really an inspiring story. If you get the chance, go to see that movie. Uh, might be a little bit too much for some of the littler kids, but anybody else, go catch that movie. So now on the first Sunday of the month, we usually ask one of our church leaders to come forward and lead us in the call to worship. So that will be Glenda, and she's gonna take us through call to worship all the way down to our opening hymn. But if you could get ready, um, she is gonna be asking us on the first Sunday, we also read from uh, uh, Do One of Our Covenants. That's gonna be Blue Hymnal number 358, uh, the Nicene Affirmation of Faith. So the call to worship is in the bulletin. Awaken to a season of joyful anticipation. God is offering peace within and among us through his Son. How good it is. We are called to celebrate our diversity. Differences shall no longer divide us because the Christ child comes as one of us. Seek the highest and best for others and ourselves. Come to the mountain of God's everlasting love. Praise be to God. Amen. And now in the blue hymnal number 358, the Nicene Affirmation of Faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now please join me in singing Blue Hymnal number 119, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Thank you. 
think Anthony liked that one? <laughs> man, oh man. Let us worship, or let us uh, share with each other the gift of peace. Please come forward. All right, hi there. How are you? How are you? You got new sneakers? Yeah. All right. You, you, got, you got a tie the new sneakers? Yeah. Oh, well, sure, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. All right, let me, let me, I'm going to fit in right here. So, guys, all right, I'm going to. You guys have been here for a while. Does anything look different in church this Sunday compared to another? Just uh, well, I saw your hand. What, what, what are you pointing at? Okay, the Advent wreath for one. Okay, well, the big table, that's true. That's not always there. So the Advent wreath, the big table, yeah. The banner's up there. Okay, anything else? Go ahead. Oh, the bells, yeah. The, are the bells or bulbs? Yeah, those are brand new. Anything else that you see that's different? It's snowing at your house already? Really? Is that what she said? Yeah, I love snow. Don't tell 20 other people, though. I don't think they like snow. But I love snow. How about this? Guys, you haven't seen this. I've been wearing green all the way since, like, uh, maybe April or May. I put on this big purple thing for the first time today. All of this is because today is Advent, okay? And the Charpentiers came up and they lit that first candle over there. And that's the candle of hope. That's the first way we begin talking about Advent. And you guys read, by the way, very, very nicely. Very, very nicely. I was kind of waiting to see who's going to light that candle. Yeah, that, that worked out well. So Advent is our time when we wait and prepare for Christmas. Are you guys preparing at home for Christmas? Who's got a Christmas tree up? Everybody's got their Christmas tree up? Do you have any outdoor lights up yet? Have, have any of you snuck out and done any? Well, you guys are living. You have a Christmas tree up at your house? Okay, so we got that. You got your yesterday's the trees, the lights. It was too high, nobody would lift you up. Could, could, could you tip the tree over and then put the tree up? No, that wouldn't work. Okay. Well, I I had a work on Friday, and I think half the Western Mass is where I was working buying stuff. So there are people out buying stuff, getting ready for Christmas. Yes. Climb up the stairs and put it on. There you go. You just have to move by the stairs at your house. In the corner of your house? In the corner. Yours is always in the corner? Your dad stands on the radiator? Okay. Alright. Okay. So all of this preparation is going on for Christmas at our houses and church. And we're doing all of that because when Jesus Come, we want to be ready. And you know, there's no more Bethlehem danger. But Jesus comes now to be born in our hearts, our souls, become the manger where Jesus is going to come on Christmas. So these four Sundays, 
infinity counting down to Christmas by preparing Jesus weighs 100 pounds? The baby Jesus? Okay, you, you, you're going to make a lot of room here for me. Alright, so we got Jesus. You got what? You got one talk? I don't know. Oh, just one talk. Oh, 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 you got the one talk. Oh, I got you. Okay, I got you. Alright. So guys, when you go to Sunday school and we continue to worship up here, we're going to start thinking about getting spiritually ready for Jesus' birth. Because he's going to come be born right here on Christmas Day. Alright, everybody, have a great Advent, have a great, exciting Christmas preparation, and have a great Sunday school.
Any other prayers? I'd like to, uh, you know, a joy is, is all of these kids coming up, um, their energy, their enthusiasm, their excitement, that adds so much to the service. Um, I didn't know what one talk was until I saw Mom doing this, but that was adorable, one talk. Um, but you know, that, that, that adds so much to the service, and we really appreciate that families take the time to bring uh, young people here to join us in worship. Anything else that you'd like to offer? All right, this is a very special time of the year, um, and it's very hectic. And so one of the things we did see in, in that Fred Rogers movie was that he was out to uh, dinner with this reporter from the Esquire who was doing the interview of him, and they literally took the time, and I think it was one minute of movie time, which is, you know, that cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. They took one minute, and they sat in this restaurant, and they were just silent. Um, and Fred Rogers said, you know, think about the people who have made you you, think about the people that are, are important in your lives, and, you know, silence is just something we're not familiar with or comfortable with. That one minute seemed like an eternity. Um, so let us just turn inward for just a few moments of silence uh, to think about the people who are near and dear to us, uh, think about the gift of the Savior who loves us enough to come to be one of us, and let us listen for Jesus. Lord, who gives us hope, whose ways are not our ways, and whose coming among us is unexpected and has proven so convincingly that you are a God of complete love in your humble birth. We dare to welcome your surprise in seeking to be awake and alert to embrace fully and all that is unexpected, that we may be changed by your appearing and be transformed by your nearness into a peaceful, more loving world. Our special time in prayer brings you closer to us and makes all things possible. And for this gift of hope, we are always grateful. Let us now come together in sharing the words that Jesus gave us the Lord's Prayer. Our God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We are stewards of God's household, managers of the earth's treasures. This time of offering gives us the opportunity to invest in causes that are consistent with God's will for all of us. To offer the light of his hope to our sisters and brothers right here amongst us, and also literally around the world. Let us help the progress of God's reign by being as generous as our faith expects and as our situation in life will allow us. 